Good morning. Please join us in our gathering hymn number 203, All Creatures of the Earth and Sky in your great hymnal. Stand as you are able. My name is Cindy Dillard, and I'm the Director of Children's and Youth Ministry. Alexa Jennings will light our chalice. Please join me in our chalice lighting words found in your order of service. We light this chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith to remind us to connect in spirituality and service, to care for each other and the world, and to create loving community. Welcome to worship at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greensboro. I'm the Reverend Sadie Lansdale, and I'm the minister of this congregation. 
Unitarian Universalists believe that each person has a trustworthy relationship with the spirit, with the holy, with the source of all life, with what some call God, though we name it and know it differently from one another. And we believe that because we are interconnected, no one's free until we all are free. So we strive to create beloved community here on earth in our fellowship with one another and in our work for justice. Whether today is your first or your thousandth Sunday with us, we are stronger because you are here. We are one people of many beliefs, many origins, sexualities, and genders. We are all growing, all learning, and all loved. Our ministry team here at UUCG is Cindy Dillard, Julie Hamilton, our congregational administrator, Colin McRae, our director of music, and me. We are thrilled to welcome Lynn Hessler as our guest musician this morning. Welcome, Lynn. Please turn off your cell phones so they do not join our musicians in their beautiful music this morning. This month, our Muslim friends and Muslim Unitarian Universalists are observing, observing Ramadan, fasting while the sun is up, and rejoicing in the presence of God as close as their hunger and their thirst. Our Christian siblings and Christian Unitarian Universalists walk through Holy Week, the entire story of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. The large bunny has brought the chocolate eggs. <laughs> And today is Transgender Day of Visibility, a day when we glory in the wide spectrum of gender diversity that colors the whole human experience. Today we explore the story of Easter with our own Unitarian Universalist spin, asking questions, embracing the mystery, and proclaiming the power of love to break through every limit of oppression and fear. If you're joining us in the sanctuary, won't you wave hello to everyone joining us online? If you're online, go ahead and introduce yourselves in the chat, and if you're in person, let's greet our neighbors. contains the promises we make to one another in response to the great gift of living, holding ourselves to these holy aspirations. Will you join me in our church covenant? We, the members of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Greensboro, do covenant to promote a search for personal meaning, respecting the individual truth in a community process of quest speak and act with caring, courtesy, and love, thereby maintaining emotional, physical, and spiritual safety for all. Support UCG and denominational efforts with our resources. Combat injustice while promoting equality. Nurture our children on their spiritual journey. Hold ourselves to this covenant especially during times of conflict and disagreement.
Jesus was a Jewish teacher in what is now Palestine, which was occupied by the Roman Empire. He taught people to love each other, that no one is more or less deserving of the love of God than anyone else. His message of the transforming power of love was very scary to those who already had power. So they killed him. And they killed him in a very public way so that everyone who followed him would be scared. They crucified him, which means they nailed his hands and feet to a cross made of wood and left him out to die. This is a very painful, very terrible way to die. Unitarian Universalists mostly believe that Jesus was an important teacher and that his message lives on in us and in anyone who believes in the power of love to change the world. But his friends and followers were very sad because they knew him and they loved him and he was gone. A man named Joseph asked for Jesus' body and they took his body off the cross, wrapped it in a linen cloth, laid it in a tomb, and rolled a stone in front of the door to protect it. If you have a sorrow on your heart, you can come forward and place a stone in the bowl. Just sorrows first today. We are going to give all the sorry sorrows space to breathe. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Tremble, tremble. 
people who lead us and teach us and help us and in the Easter story that person was Jesus for his followers but there are many others the women who told the truth though they couldn't hardly believe it Peter who had to go see for himself and sometimes these people these teachers these guides are with us in the flesh in their bodies and other times even though they are gone, they remain with us in mysterious ways. Mentors, friends, teachers, and ancestors, blood or chosen, the ones who yet and still appear to encourage you on your way. We invite you now to light candles of prayer and presence in their honor.
saw where he put the body they left the tomb the next day was their day of rest and so the day after that they came back with spices to prepare Jesus's body to be buried but when they reached the tomb the stone was rolled away the body was gone and a man there told them that Jesus was going back to Galilee he said to the women why do you look for the living among the dead they were amazed They remembered his words and went back to their friends and told them what they had seen, that the tomb was empty and someone had told them that Jesus was not dead. But no one believed them. So Peter went to the tomb to see for himself what had happened. And when he got there, he saw the strips of cloth lying on the ground. And he went away, wondering. today, if not tomorrow, then all things in time, we can't predict what comes to pass, all we control is how we react and how we recover something like faith deep in our skin 
everything he needs time all things in time some things come quick some things come easy but all things will come given the chance given the room i can't decide the length of a day the depth of an ocean i just decide what to explore maybe it's just wanting it more want it enough let it begin everything in its to lose plenty to fear let's make a deal i will be here wanting with you trusting what's true stumbling blind but knowing we'll find everything A few days later, Jesus appeared to his disciples. While they were talking, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Sometimes there is joy like that. Something keeping us company, something that surprises us. And the story says that while in their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. Is there a joy coming to life in you? Is there some mystery pulling you closer? Come forward and place a flower in the vase for your mysterious and surprising joys.
Every week we end our prayers like this. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not yet love. For ourselves and those we love. Mike Bridges died suddenly earlier this month. I was on the way to choir practice to work with our choir and our new music director, Colin, on their new covenant uh, when I found out. I walked in, I was visibly shaken. I told the choir the news and sort of froze considering whether or not I should proceed with our agenda. And Susan Hill asked, is there anything the choir can do for you? Is there anything we can sing for you? And I thought, oh, I'm the minister. I'm supposed to take care of you. You know, you don't take care of me and, and my responsibilities. And I don't have, and it's 730. And I don't have that much time. I mean, you know, just like, mm. uh, and the spirit moves even when we don't always have the good sense to see it. So I sat myself down like right there and we sang hymns of comfort for ourselves, for myself, and for those we love. And I was released from my pretending that I am more of a pastor than a person, or that your deaths don't also bring me to my knees, even though I am the one who speaks when there is nothing to say. for those we do not yet love. In 2008, there was a shooting at the Tennessee Valley UU Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. For any number of our public stances that bring heaven to earth, that bring more love into the world, and that also draw ire and opposition. The following Sunday, there was a reconsecration uh, area you use and you use from all over Tennessee. Other ministers came to the church. The UUA president, Bill Sinkford, was there. The Reverend Bill Sinkford came and he was interviewed in front of the church. The Knoxville newscaster handed the Reverend Bill Sinkford the microphone and he said, Do you believe that that person is going to hell? And uh, the Reverend Bill Sinkford said, we Unitarian Universalists believe he is already there. There is nowhere worse to send him. Anyone with this much hate in their heart lives there already. And there is no punishment greater than this kind of alienation from our human family. Now the prosecutor tried to get the death penalty and the congregation fought against it. They succeeded. People whose family members he killed testified in court that he should yet live. We will stay right here in the heaven on earth that we have made, they said. We will stay right here and we'll send no one away. Unitarian Universalists do not believe in the bad place that bad people go forever and the ways it is used to threaten and coerce when we are alive. But we believe that hell is disconnection, isolation, and violence, and it is here on earth. And together we refuse these things and create heaven instead. I know that some of you have known the tomb and feel raised from the dead. I know that some of you have committed and experienced great harm and have found a way forward back into relationship. I know that some of you feel that your own lives, not your eternal souls, but your very lives have been saved by the mystery, by community, by the choice you made, or by one you do not understand. Heaven on earth 
is all of us being held tenderly in our sorrow. For me, it's feeling held by the Spirit with you, refusing the lie that I only offer and do not receive prayers for comfort. Heaven on earth is where all people are celebrated for who they are, where we glory in the spectrums of gender and sexuality, where we build ever wider doors and throw ever more raucous parties to know ourselves and one another more deeply and to ensure that we are all protected and cherished. Where the tears that we weep are tears of joy and we throw ourselves naming celebrations and adult gender reveal parties and where any confusion we, t we feel about any of that turns so quickly to wonder. Last week, I went to an iftar, a dinner that Muslims share together to break their fast after sundown during the holy month of Ramadan. Organized by a group called Muslim Women Four, this dinner was mostly attended by Sudanese women and Palestinian women, people whose hearts are breaking for the violence in their countries, people who struggle and laugh and gather eating chicken and rice and beef and yogurt sauce made by somebody's immigrant mother, fasting out of choice. Heaven on earth is where they all have the right of return to visit their grandparents, where they eat good food that reminds them of the country where their parents were born and they feel equally at home here, where they choose to wear their hijabs, their headscarves, complementing one another's choice of color and fashions in freedom, where they celebrate Ramadan knowing that all Muslims around the world who are hungry choose to fast and are not forced to it, secure in the bounty that awaits them at iftar after sundown. We've been going to eviction court as a part of a campaign for more city and county funding for legal aid and tenant defense. This is a campaign called Keep Gate City Housed. Legal aid lawyers help to prevent or delay evictions long enough for people to get back on their feet. Heaven on earth is where everyone, everyone has a safe place to lay their head. The world where the worth and dignity of every person is honored, where wounds are healed, where every tear is dried and every need met with compassion, where there are no walls or borders or prisons or cages, where nobody hoards so nobody starves where no one goes hungry and everyone has enough. Heaven on earth is not guaranteed, but the promise of our faith, the very best of our humanism, is that heaven on earth is possible. Revelation is not sealed and the future is not decided, says Unitarian theologian James Luther Adams. God is change write science fiction author Octavia Butler. Why do you look for the living among the dead, says the scripture. You got anything to eat, says the one who was killed, whose message has not died. I believe six impossible things every day before breakfast, says the queen of hearts in Alice in Wonderland. Heaven on earth is not guaranteed, but the promise of our faith is that it is possible and made yet more possible by our actions with our hands and our hearts for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not yet love. Amen. Rise in body or in spirit for number 151 in your gray hymnal, I Wish I Knew How.
the time to write your milestones that you'd like shared in prayer on your yellow cards, and the ushers will collect them with our offering. Our minister's discretionary fund is available to anyone in a tough financial spot. We can help with medical bills, rent, groceries, and other needs. Rev. Sadie's email and phone number are on your order of service. Our offering this month is split with the minister's discretionary fund. We stave off hunger. We get people their meds. We forestall eviction. We provide a rest and a respite from financial distress until the paycheck comes in. You make this giving possible. <coughs> if you'd like to make a contribution, you can do so at the link in the description of this video. You can text GIVE to the number in your order of service. You can also mail a check. Ushers will come forward to collect the offering, which will now be gratefully received. From you I give, from you I receive, to you I give. Together we share, and by this we live. Will you join me in prayer and presence? Please keep Tish Gunn's mom in your hearts as she hopefully heals enough. For my patient who died, my mom who is in pain, and my sister whom I miss, prayers of comfort for you. Alicia Rosales' aunt has been placed on hospice, and it won't be long. And Alicia, our prayers of comfort with you and your family. The Kay family is remembering Michael's mother, Barbara, who would have turned 74 today. Our prayers of comfort are with you. Suzanne Deering has been moved to hospice. We offer prayers of comfort and peace for Suzanne in her dying, and for EJ and their daughter Lydia. <clears throat> Linda Sullivan shares, today is the 25th anniversary of my dad's death. That year, 331 was Good Friday, and this year it's Easter. A beautiful coincidence.
I'm not really sure if that one's a joy or a sorrow, but yeah, always both. <laughs> Harold Gunn says, we had a great visit with my brother and my nieces and grandnephew yesterday. He drove up from Florida to be with his youngest daughter in Charlotte. Prayers of encouragement and joy for you, Harold, and your family. Annabesh, Annabeth Rushforth attended prom this week, is preparing for the SAT on Wednesday, and is performing in her high school musical next weekend. And our prayers of joy and encouragement for you, Annabeth. Alexa Jennings says, my uncle is getting out of jail. And our prayers of joy and freedom for you and for him. Colette Bowler says, the Easter Bunny came in the backyard and gave me awesome prizes. Hurrah. <laughs> prayers of joy and encouragement and celebration on this day. Today is Logan Hamilton's 23rd birthday. Our prayers of joy. And gratitude, Logan, for your life and for your presence in this church. We pray in the words of the Reverend Julia Hamilton. Spirit of hope, settle into our bones on this Easter morning. Remind us once again that the dawn light is never a gamble. If there ever was a sure bet, it is the sunrise. Even stones crumble, even grief changes and shifts, and death is a mystery that is certain but not solid. But hope is like the sunrise, eternal and bone bred within us. We are creatures built by sunshine and cannot carve this hope out of our bones if we tried. And yet people have tried tried to entomb the light, tried to seal off the mourning. Emperors and kings, priests and patriarchs have brought down death, certain but not solid, on those who point to a new dawn. In fearful moments, we can be forgiven if we stumble and if we doubt and if we deny. But still the sun rises and calls all her children into bloom. Always, she says, always I will return. So don't despair. The small ways of the petty tyrants never win. Place your money on the sunrise. Who are we to bet against glory? Put your hands and hearts to work for the creation of heaven on our only earth. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not yet love. Amen. Myself and 
all the noise but if we all would rise a generation proud with a mighty song we could turn this world around around fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turning of the tide fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turning of the Will you join me in our chalice extinguishing words? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. If you're online and you'd like to get more connected, click the link in the description of this video and fill out the contact card on the church website. If you're in person, fill out the pink form at the visitor's table or visit our website for the contact form. And of course, stick around after worship for our potluck and our Easter egg hunt. Heaven on earth is yet possible. Put your hands and your hearts to work. Who are we to bet against glory? Happy Easter. Go in peace. Join in our benediction hymn from this house.
children and youth, join me in the front. Thank you again for a great job.